and welcome to Security Unfiltered, a show where we discuss and challenge the ever-changing norms of the security and communication market and see how today's technology and tomorrow's technology fit in the modern world. In today's episode, I'm joined by... Reinhard Traninger. <laughs> Reinhard Traninger from uh, Command International uh, in Austria. And we're going to take a look at cybersecurity. But before we start, Reinhard, welcome. Thank you very much to have me here. <laughs> Great to have you here. Quite excited. Let's do an intro. Could you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself? Yeah. As already said, my name is Reinhard Branninger. I'm from Command International in Salzburg. I work for Command now about 16 years. Oh, long time then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> long time. And uh, I started in product testing. Before Command, I was working for Sony. And there I was already a little bit in the security part because we did uh, copy protection oh, right. for CDs and DVDs. The product was called Securom and we tried to prevent the copying of all the games like Diablo 2 and all those things, <laughs> which was always a run uh, between the guys who cheated <laughs> and, and uh, tried to get the games cracked and things like that. Oh, so that's interesting. So it's sort of the security side. The security side, yeah. It's been sort of constant between the two companies. Oh, all right, different, different yeah. Uh, products. Yeah. But uh, I didn't know that. Okay. And then I started at Command in the product testing team and did 10 years customized solution. And now four years, I'm segment manager for the industry segment. So you've uh, you've always been involved in the security. Uh, we could we could say right. Yeah. So uh, protecting security and safety. I would say now twenty two years about. Twenty two years. Yeah. That's great. Uh, we mentioned earlier we were going to talk about cyber security, and it's something that you see quite a lot. Uh, it's it's on the news. Obviously, there's quite a lot of information online, and it's something we keep hearing about. What is cyber security? So, cyber security is a very, very widespread term, and uh, there is a lot of things included in cyber security. And as you mentioned, their cybersecurity is rising every day somewhere in the news in the world that the company is hacked or something like that. And it's a really holistic approach about different things. It's about practices, processes, technologies um, to manage uh, mainly the risk. Um, you can't avoid the risk 100%, yeah. uh, but it's managing the risk to get it the most low as it is possible uh, for a company. So it's not just about what antivirus program you put on your computer. It's quite wide and it covers lots of different areas. Yeah, it's, it starts really from the outside of the company, from the physical security that people cannot approach the area, um, cannot go into a building. Uh, also, the, the human risk is a high risk that can uh, influence that whole situation. Um, of course, it's about network security, data security, fail safety and all those things. As an example, if you throw uh, some USB sticks over the fence and put on nice uh, <laughs> holiday pictures from the, the <laughs> manager, a lot of people would go into the company and uh, put maybe the USB stick into a USB device and you're already <laughs> having a quite big issue. <laughs> That's maybe. quite interesting that you brought up the human element of it because when you hear about cybersecurity, at least me, when I hear about it, I, I think antivirus program on my laptop. But it's quite interesting to, to sort of see the other side of it, which is the human element. As you mentioned, the USB sticks being thrown over a fence. It's, it's uh, what we do as humans and how we can protect, as you mentioned, even the physical side, the physical security side and how everything links together. That's quite interesting. So how do you link that with the, with the industry? Uh, obviously, cybersecurity uh, straight away. I'm thinking servers, IT, but uh, obviously you've been involved in the sort of industry segment or the market sector. How is that linked? How does that work? 
Yeah, I mean, we see um, IoT devices coming up more and more everywhere and also in the industry, in the production areas uh, that we have IT 4.0, uh, which is um, common um, that every data are locked or, or, or reported somewhere, reported to the cloud, reported uh, to a lot of different reporting systems. Uh, and you want to do something with this data, learn something from out of your data and the production, for example. Um, and uh, the differentiation between OT networks and IT networks are not that existing anymore as it was in the past. In the past, we very often saw that really the operational technology networks where you have the PLCs of your production machine in, this is completely se separated uh, from the IT network. But all those data are going somewhere to data center or going somewhere where you also take out this data and, and process them, the data in the offices. So IT and OT networks are coming together and very often um, a PLC software is maybe maintained or from outside as well. So you have the technicians from another company who do the PLC programming and things like that. So it's really coming up in the industry that also this cybersecurity things, what we think in the IT industry is very important. And do you see this becoming more and more important and relevant to the industry as a whole or is there a specific market sector or specific section of the industry where they, they, they started to really think about cybersecurity? I think it's for every industry really important to think about. Of course, all the critical infrastructure and the industries where we have the critical infrastructure are really the ones who have to have a look on that most way. Yeah. And can you give us, I mean, the, the, this is something we hear about a lot, critical. What is critical? What industries would you say are critical infrastructure or part of that segment? Is this specified? Is this something that companies, governments, uh, people think about actively? Or is this uh, a, a body that will say, okay, this segment is critical and, and specified as critical in infrastructure? It's definitely defined which uh, industries are the critical infrastructures. Um, so every country has, let me say, their own specification, what they see as a critical infrastructure. But in the EU, for example, we have uh, the NIS, and the NIS 2 is rising up very soon. Uh, and there it is defined what industries or what segments in the industries are critical infrastructures. In the UK, we have critical infrastructures, which are communication, so telecommunication, postal service, broadcasting, emergency services, uh, energy segment, financial services, food, governmental services, health, transport, defense, coast guards, chemicals, civil and nuclear and space. So there are 13 sectors. Oh my God, <laughs> which this are... is very wide <laughs> ranging. It covers quite a lot then. Yeah, it covers really quite a lot. Of course, not uh, every company which is in working in that sector is critical infrastructure. It depends also to the size of the companies. If this company is not working, um, let me say, for example, energy provider is hacked or shut it down, how this influences then a certain area of, for example, in UK, um, how many households will have no electricity, how many companies will have no electricity, what is the impact of such an mm. hack or, or yeah. of such a crime which can be yeah, committed. It's, so. it's definitely an interesting way of, of looking at it, the impact it could have uh, on our sort of day-to-day -day lives. Um, so it is quite important. And what do we need to think about to prepare for, for cybersecurity or be aware, raise awareness, not just as a company, but uh, you know, as, as all these different segments and industry sectors? What do we need to think about? Where do we need to start? 
So it really starts with uh, risk analysis. And it starts at the product development. It starts at the product design already from the manufacturers. Um, it goes then over the whole life cycle of a product, for example, that uh, the product design is already done uh, secure design, uh, the architecture of the product is secure and it's uh, from really the start of a product, the birth of a product, let me say it like that, till the recycling of the product, uh, the whole process from integrators, how they specify, how they design a system that this design is already made uh, IT secure and thinking of uh, risks uh, and then of course as well the operational part. So the guys who operate the system, that they uh, upgrade the system, that they put in the latest softwares with security patches. So it's really going over the whole life cycle of a product and, and it's also that you be aware of it as a company that all products you put in which are somehow in your IT network that you have or that you need to have a look on that. So don't choose any unsecure product, maybe a cheap one which you just put into your uh, network if you are critical infrastructure without analyzing the risks about what could happen. Could this product get hacked? How, okay. how could you maybe influence them and come into the network over this product. Mm. Is this product somewhere in the internet? Um, is it talking to the outside world or how it is uh, in the whole system? So a very small product could also cause security leak. Ah, that's, that's interesting because in that case, the whole chain is involved. So although obviously it starts with the manufacturers that they have to think about, they have to think about designing with security in mind but it also involves the consultants, the system integrators, and obviously the end user. So are there any standards and norms that sort of clarifies uh, these roles and the interconnection between these groups? Is there anything that would sort of make it more clear? Is, it, is there a standard? Are there any norms that we can look at? There are different standards uh, on the on the market um, and uh, I think one of the most mentioned standards is the ISO 27000 for um, information uh, security management system where you have a lot of processes involved uh, in a company if you are ISO 27001 certified company uh, which is already as I mentioned before starting a defense of the company at access uh, and all your processes you have, and you also train the people in the company uh, that they get awareness, that they know what they do. Yeah. Um, and uh, then, of course, there's another standard, is uh, 62443 standard, which also was coming out originally from the production part and was thinking of how you implement OT security into your system. And this is very much adapted now to not only production. Uh, so you really think, and the 62443 is really going that way that it is for secure design of the development and secure product. So we already have a lot more details about the, how to implement, how to think and design based with cybersecurity in mind. So it's not just holistic, it's now going into guidelines and details on how companies, manufacturers and system integrators can implement cybersecurity in their applications and solutions? Yeah, exactly. Ah, oh, that is really interesting. So obviously, Commend is a manufacturer. What What is it that you guys need to think about when you start with cybersecurity? Yeah, it's really, you start with the product design, you start with the software architecture. So it's on the one hand side, also the hardware design, what kind of hardware you use. It starts also with processors. If, if there are security lags, m maybe already known in a certain kind of processor. So it's really starts with the hardware components as well, that you choose secure components already. Uh, think about USB ports and all those things, and then uh, goes into the software design, software architecture, 
uh, you need to have a look if you take some open source software what kind of open source software it is how secure is that is this a software which is uh, maintained are there security checks on that software um, then of course all what you write the software think about all the different things that could happen so with our product as i mentioned the usb part you are not able to just plug in any usb stick uh, to our usb port also of course things like password security um, that you need to change your password and then the operational part is more uh, let me say that you have a secure password chosen then as well <laughs> yeah. not one two three four five <laughs> not one two three four five and you can prevent with the software that you select the password with a minimum of digits and numbers yeah. and in it and that it's not only free signs or things like that but uh, then you also need to choose a <laughs> good password <laughs> for example <laughs> i mean with everything that's that's happening uh, within the industries do you see a trend is uh cyber security awareness on the rise is this uh, is this something that people actively think about and invest in where do you see this going in the future what is the trend that you guys see with security or it security maybe in the past it was more that you don't do anything as long as nothing is happening and then you invest <laughs> a lot of money after that. <laughs> but uh, the awareness uh, is really growing and you see it popping up everywhere uh, from security in different industries. Uh, so uh, it's really rising and uh, the invests are more and more there to have IT or a secure uh, system in place in your company and can you be 100% cyber secure is this possible is this a goal that we can achieve I think this is just um, an illusion <laughs> that you, <laughs> you can be 100% secure so uh, I've heard a good example yesterday um, can you be 100% secure that you don't get hurt if you cross the street? Um, so if you cross a street, you minimize the risk. So you have a look on left and the right side and then you cross the street and you probably won't get hurt by a car uh, or <laughs> a bicycle or a scooter or whatever. <laughs> so it's not like you go, okay, ne next year we're going to become cyber secure. And you, you go, okay, now I've gone from A to B, I'm cyber secure, and that's that, I'm done. It's all about risk minimizing. So is this a continuous uh, process? Is this something you mentioned with the software upgrades and patches? Is this something that you constantly need to look at and assess to minimize all the risks? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can have a good security today. You can have a look to minimize the risk on today with all the vulnerabilities, with all the things we know maybe by today, but by tomorrow it can be different. So it's one thing that the companies who develop a product look at the security leaks of their product and immediately if something is popping up that they inform them, for example, operators or, or inform then the company who is having their product in place that there is a security leak um, and that they need to upgrade the software and close the security leak because if you don't do anything for several years you had your system secured or minimized the risk at that time when you had it in place but a few years after then it's maybe completely open and every day there are new hacks every day there are new things people try to go into the system there is new software coming up and so on so it's always challenge or, or a yeah. competition yeah. let me say it like that <laughs> between between the ones who who hack into the system and the, between the ones who try to make it safe again yeah. so <laughs> it's a and, challenge uh, for some people to sort of, uh, it might be just for fun, they try to sort of hack into systems. But uh, where do you see this going in the future? Do you think 
there will be more regulations, more guidelines, more standards, or do you think this will remain sort of each company's responsibility to look at cybersecurity? Where do you see this going? Yeah, first, I think it's um, each company in their own interests to look at cybersecurity because what we see how companies were hacked, how companies were locked out from their own system, how the payments uh, they have to do. Uh, so it's therefore a financial risk or a risk that your data are leaked somewhere that maybe your data are sold to the pit, <laughs> pit <laughs> competitors <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, things like that. But not only that, it's also we see as I mentioned before, NIS2 is rising up in the EU. So um, it's really an awareness uh, from the governmental side as well and from the official bodies there that uh, we need to secure our systems also national-wide because you see in the future your country could be attacked or shut it down maybe easily with just cyber hacks or things like cyber war, let's say yeah. it like that. So we've, we've had something similar uh, uh, last year uh, in the UK with the NHS. So we've, we've seen it on the news, but uh, obviously when you see things on the news, you go, ah, oh, this will never happen to me, you know. Do you see this happening? Do you, are you guys monitoring the news? Do you see this happening to different companies as well? Or is it mainly this big corporate that uh, hackers go for or is it coming down to mid-sized companies as well absolutely and we are monitoring this on a daily basis so we have a guy who's just in the it secure or cyber security and he's uh, monitoring things every day he's looking at different websites around the world where I, where the security issues are are on so we're monitoring this uh, we know which software we have in place if if some leaks are are or even if leaks in the hardware, in the processor or things like that are popping up, we all monitored this and uh, are really try to most be up to date uh, to see what's going on. And uh, as soon as something pops up, we inform our customers. Uh, we immediately try to patch uh, that and, and make the software secure again and, and send out and also the information. There is a software update available and things like that. We monitor that really on a daily basis. Uh, so if I'm starting with cybersecurity today, what is what is my first step? What do I need to do and think about? Sherrick, sure, that's a good question um, because this is really a widespread topic. But um, I think it all starts with analyzing the risks, analyzing the potential of these risks, analyzing processes and systems in your company. Then it goes to creating policies and information security, implementing incident business continuity and crisis management, things like that. Um, also ensure that the security or ensure the security of your supply chain down to secure development of suppliers. Define for sure uh, methods uh, for testing, for audits, uh, and uh, ensure the information security as well. And take care of all the transported data in your network and the security and make sure those data are encrypted. Um, but yeah, it's really a big topic and it's nothing what you can implement in one, two days. <laughs> 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 ah, that's great. Uh, as you said, yes, it's uh, it's a lot to cover. Uh, cybersecurity is a big topic, and and you mentioned that it starts from the first step could be processes and how we think about cybersecurity, but it also covers products, uh, how systems are designed, and how they are implemented, all the way to where and how you recycle that product, uh, including, uh, I mean, even the operators need to be aware of this. So it's a, quite a big topic, but I think we've covered a few points. 
as an introduction to cybersecurity, and hopefully we can uh, invite you back to give us a bit more sort of uh, details into the standards in the next episode. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Reinhard, thank you very much for joining us. And I hope you come back and give us more details. Yeah, for sure. Thank you very much, Sherlock. <laughs> and thank you to all of our listeners. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode of Security Unfiltered. As you know, we upload a new episode every month. And you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, and other podcast streaming platforms. Thank you.